Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to another video. Before I get started showing you how to make one of these beautiful babies, which is not resined yet, but it will be soon, I just need to say thank you to a few people. Between the holidays and my auction, I am so behind on everything. I finally today mailed out the last two auction paintings. So everybody should have theirs or they should be there any day now. Okay, so just remember yesterday there was a holiday and they had Sunday because I mailed out a bunch on Saturday too. So they will be there. Anyway, first I want to thank Miss Lisa Wyatt, my sister from another mister. If you don't know who Lisa Wyatt is, she has a channel. Go check her out. She made me a beautiful, beautiful glass ornament using primary elements. And they are just, it is just stunning. The camera does not do justice for this bad boy right here. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. And she made me a couple of beautiful necklaces also. A little sunflower. I don't know why my camera is having such a hard time focusing. It must be the ring light. And she would say it's a dragon eye probably. I'm going to say it's a cat eye necklace. Oh, that's having a really hard time focusing because of the glare. They're absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. I also need to thank, really quick, Judy Sand for the light and for the donation. Thank you, my friend. Um, I had a live a few weeks ago and I caught the end of the name, the beginning of the name. It was Texas, maybe for me. Thank you for the donation. Kenneth Davis, Kathy Carr, Barbara Garnier, Susan Kane, Tracy Boyd, Sandy's Serendipitous Things, Bunny Hart, Patty Puckett, and Christina Welsh Art. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I truly appreciate it. So it, it has just been crazy, but finally I'm back to where I have nothing on my table except art to do. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing today are the five interferences from Color Art. They are called Bling It. I have the link below with a 20% off coupon. If you have not seen these babies in action, please check out my earlier videos. Here is one that has one coat of resin on it and you can see how they light up that beautiful oyster shell um abalone shell effect to them so i'm going to be using all five of those with one golden color okay i am using the fluorescent red my background is going to be black, and the black paint that I'm using comes from Walmart, and this is it. So we have onyx black and semi-gloss from Walmart, $18 a gallon. So that is what we're putting down first. I poured some out of the can into the cup. This big cup, I believe this is approximately 16 ounces. I added three ounces of water to it just to loosen it up a little bit, okay? My colors are mixed with three parts vivid enamel and two parts polycrylic. I'm sorry, one part polycrylic. This one is mixed with two parts, par parts polycrylic because it is a paint that has some body to it. So naturally it's going to be thicker than a powder, which the interferences are. So when you have a powder, I do a three to one ratio. When I have something that is a little bit thicker that I'm using, like the golden fluorescent red in this case, I use a little more polycrylic because I need them to be the same consist consistency, okay? If you're using house paints like the Glidden, you can do uh, three parts of the Glidden to one part polycrylic 
the same type of measurement there. What you want to do is mix up your, your powders first, if you're using powders, and then do the tube paints last so that you know how much polyacrylic to add to it to get it to that good consistency. And you want it, them all to match. So whichever order you want to do that in. Usually I do my colors first and then the pillow paint or the base paint here, the black, I will do last because I know how thick I need to be. Usually that's the thickest thing that you work with. So I'm going to see if I can try to catch some of this. This is probably going to be a disaster. Um, yeah, total disaster. <laughs> so yeah, I do the colors first and then I'll come back and see how thick the pillow paint is and add a little water if it needs to be. Usually it, it does need a little water all the time. All right, so I'm just coating this eight by 16, I believe, canvas. By the way, the tape that I'm using, you may be seeing it now, is the Cadillac of all tapes. I am so happy I found this tape. I put it in my Amazon shop. It's a sharp line tape. So your lines, especially if you're covering the sides of your canvas uh, or the underneath where you want it to be nice and clean after you remove the tape, this stuff is just phenomenal. And I linked it in um, my Amazon shop. It's a little more expensive because it's a really good quality tape, but it is a super thick roll and pretty wide. Somebody asked me the other day, they saw a piece I was working on that was wood and they saw my sides and they said, oh my God, how do you fix those sides? Because it can be very deceiving when you look at it. Just like this piece, for example. I mean, look at the sides. Now, if that tape wasn't forward, you would not know that it was taped, but what I do is I tape all the way up to the top, all the way around the sides. Now, once I resin this and pull that tape off, this is going to be beautiful, natural wood underneath. Okay, so here we go. Let me shut it up. I'm working on my Lazy Susan today with my Lily Buffet mat. And I have these cute little beakers from Lily Buffet that I think they were like, Maybe five for eight dollars or eight for five dollars, something like that. And I like them because they have the little point on it to pour a nice little circle. And then whatever is left over, I put into my five ounce salsa cups. Thank you, Lena. And put a lid on top. So we are ready to go. Let me shut up now. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is put down all five interferences. This is a very simple technique. And I'm going to make five puddles. So we're going to go with the gold first. Now these are going to probably look white to you. I probably could have went a little further apart. And we'll do we'll do smaller puddles. And we'll do six of them. Or seven, I mean. Well, I'll definitely be falling on my face blowing this snap. <laughs> All these uh puddles. I meant to go a little bit bigger, but it is what it is. Stop dripping. I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit here. Jeez. Be a great grandma by the time this is done. Okay. So that's the gold. And of course I spilled. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you guys because this is just 
repeating. I'm going to do the blue, the green, no, the blue, the violet, the green, the red. Okay, so I have all five interferences down. Gold, blue, violet, green, red. They probably all look white to you. Again, you're not going to see anything really until I bring the camera down. So now this is my fluorescent red from Golden. I'm just going to put a nice serving. I hate these cheap gloves. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. A nice serving of the little of the uh, fluorescent red right in the center. Okay. Oh, that was in the center. Jeez. Talk about being off. Okay. Just catching the drips. This is a really simple one to do. I hope you guys try it. Hopefully I can re replicate a little bit of what I did on the other one because that one came out stunning. I can't wait to resonate and show you guys just how stunning it is. Okay. Now it's cell activator time. So for my cell activator, I'm using uh, heavy body carbon black by golden. I have that in the Amazon shop. If you want to see a picture of it, also the, the lazy Susan, all of it is in there. Um, with American flow trawl, I put about two tablespoons of paint in the cup and then I add flow trawl till it gets to be about the same consistency of my paints. So the cell activator should be the last one you do out of everything. Okay, that's plenty. And here we go. Let me just move this back a little bit so I can hopefully reach it with my face. <laughs> okay, you guys can see. All right, first I'm gonna go this part, this half of them up and then spin it around and do the bottom half. Take a break for a second before I faint. Okay, we're gonna go around this way. Rest our head for a minute. It's a lot of blowing. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I 
And I don't want you to worry about these centers too much if you see a lot of black staying there because I have a trick for that. All right. So now what I'm going to do is get my airbrush out. You could do the same thing with a straw if you want doesn't have to be an airbrush and I'm going to put a little air into places that I missed with my breath or that were kind of tight spaces that I was afraid if I blew it would ruin the side of a different one so Give it some air from up above and come slowly down. You'll get some cells to form. I don't want to mess with this too much because I love it. I absolutely love it. So. Plus, I still have to tilt it a little, so just got to be careful here. See where I dripped? Now, that's a big pain for me because I love that right there, but this drip is in the way. So I could put some black paint over it, right? Or I could try to get rid of it which I'm going to do. All right, so that's where I'm stopping right now with this. I'm going to pause you and give this paint a minute to come back up to the center, and then we're going to tilt a little bit. Okay, so I let it sit for a minute. I'd say two minutes total, and it is ready. I cannot believe how close I got it to this other one. It's like actually... It's so hard to duplicate an acrylic pour no matter what technique you're doing. But it like literally came out exactly the same. So that's a good thing. So now I'm going to tilt a little bit this way first. You have to get some of this paint off the canvas, unfortunately. Not that I want to because it's very beautiful. But we have to. I'm going to try, try, try my hardest not to lose too much. Come on. Of course, I have this one bloom giving me an issue. Okay. Now we're going to go back up. And I think I'm going to stop right there. I think I am going to stop. I'm going to try to get some of this color here up. I don't know though. Let's see if I hold it on an angle. If I could get that one now. And I don't want to ruin the rest of them. So we're going to leave that as is. That is just gorgeous. I don't know if you can see any of those interference colors. But. Ooh, child. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm going to give you a close up really quick. They're really similar. Now, remember, this one's dry, so it's not as vibrant. I have to resin it still. And this is a bigger piece, but very, very similar. 
I don't know if you even saw that. <laughs> Very similar. There's one part that's annoying me here. It's this corner, but the good thing is, is there's some interference going over it. So you're seeing violet over the black. So I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, so first I will give you a view this way, and then I will take a shot with the lights off. So the cool thing is, is even though I didn't add white, that interference has the look of white, yet once I get that resin and I start moving the picture on the camera, you're going to see that white is going to turn to gold. It's really, really magical. If you can get these colors, I really, really hope you can experience them because they are just magical for this type of art. And now I will give you the lights off view. So remember, we didn't add blue or purple or gold, green. any of that it's just the pigments at work and once we uh, get that resin on there the bam baby <laughs> So guys, if you liked the video, please don't forget to click the word like. Uh, all the links that you need for uh, the products that I use that you want to try out are in the description of the video. There's a little arrow underneath the video, a little tiny arrow. You click on that and the description will pop up. And um, everything's down there, including... The link for my Facebook group, you just click on that link and it'll take you right to United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. All right. So I hope you guys are all have an amazing day. Um, all the artwork that you see is for sale, providing that it dries fine, which usually they do. And um, there's a link for my Etsy shop at the end of every video. So check it out. I hope you all have a great day and happy pouring.